Hello. In this video, we are going to start becoming familiar with that uh, common or universal design methodology that we're going to employ for analog filter design. And that is the method of frequency and impedance scaling. Uh, so the design methodology basically consists of two steps, which I have written here. One is we start with a normalized circuit, meaning a circuit where both the gain and the cutoff kind of frequency are equal to one. And then we scale the frequency and the impedances in the circuit to meet our desired specs, our specific cutoff kind of frequency, our specific gain. Um, in order to do that, we use a frequency scaling factor, uh, which I've labeled K sub F, and it's basically the ratio of um, omega prime to omega, meaning the frequency that we want to achieve, cutoff kind of frequency that we want to achieve, divided by the frequency, cutoff kind of frequency of the normalized circuit. Uh, since omega is related to f by a factor of 2 pi, kf can also be expressed as the ratio of f prime to f. And then there is an impedance scaling factor that we need to calculate, uh, k sub r. And uh, k sub r is going to be used to modify the impedances of the different elements in the circuit in order to meet our desired specs. Uh, in a way that once we calculate our impedance scaling factor, all our resistors are going to be modified by multiplying uh, the resistance in the normalized circuit times the impedance scaling factor, Kr, that will give us the new resistance value, R prime. Uh, the new capacitor values, C prime, are going to be equal to 1 over Kf times Kr times C, the capacitor value in the normalized circuit. And the same thing for inductors. Uh, the new value of inductances, L prime, are going to be equal to Kf over Kr times the value of the inductor in the original normalized circuit. Um, if this is seeming a little bit hazy right now, don't worry, we're going to take a look at an example, so hopefully it'll become more clear. I'm going to go ahead and highlight uh, these factors though, so that um, we keep them in mind as we are going to be using them in, in the procedure that follows. So we're going to start with a very simple example that is the example of a passive low-pass filter, passive first-order low-pass filter. Passive first-order low-pass filter. And that consists, as we are all aware, of a resistor in series with a capacitor. The input supply at one terminal of the resistor, the output is taken across the capacitor. And in the normalized version of this circuit is um, one where both the resistor and the capacitor have a value of 1. 1 ohm for the resistor, 1 farad for the capacitor. Obviously, the cut of frequency, 1 over RC, is going to be equal to 1 over 1 times 1, which is equal to 1 radian per second. And if I wanted to calculate my cut of frequency in hertz, that will just be equal to 1 over 2 pi RC, or in this case, simply 1 over 2 pi. So this is a normalized circuit. Uh, the gain is also one, obviously, because it's a passive filter. So um, no gain different than one or greater than one is possible anyway. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and redesign this circuit or start with this normalized circuit. And from this, uh, design a passive first order low pass filter with a cut of frequency of one kilohertz. So my F prime is going to be one kilohertz. <clears throat> and that might have been it. We may not have any further constraints, but uh, let's assume that we want to use a particular capacitor value. We want our uh, C prime to be equal to 0 0.001 um, microfarads or one nanofarad. So these are my design specs. And now I need to use frequency and impedance scaling to modify the normalized circuit in order to meet these specs. Uh, my first step is going to be to uh, determine my frequency scaling factor, or Kf. And that's a pretty easy step because it's just the ratio of omega prime to omega, or as we have said, um, f prime to f. Since we know the value of omega in this circuit is 1 radian per second, we can just say omega prime is going to be equal to 2 pi times f prime, 
which is one kilohertz divided by one radian per second, the value of omega for this circuit. And that gives me 6,283.185. Second step, I'm going to determine my impedance scaling factor, K sub R. And again, normally I might have to make an assumption of, you know, what capacitor value or, or what inductor value I would like to use. Typically, resistors come in um, a, a higher variety of values or higher ranges of values than inductors or capacitors. And so if we have to uh, set one a priori, we're typically going to try to set the, either the cap or the inductor and then figure out what the resistor values need to be. In this case, we've decided 0 0.001 microfarads. And so from there, I can, using my, um, my capacitance equation, my capacitance conversion equation, figure out the value of Kr. So C prime will be equal to 1 over Kf times Kr times C. And so I can solve for Kr, and I have Kr will be equal to C divided by Kf times C prime. My C, obviously, is just my uh, one farad capacitor in the circuit. Kf, I just calculated, is my frequency scaling factor, is 6283.185. And my C prime is the capacitor I want to be using in the scaled circuit, and it has value 0 0.001 micro. So my um, scaling factor, impedance scaling factor, is 159. Uh, 155. 159,155. Alright, step number three. Now that I know my impedance scaling factor, I can scale my other components. In this case, it's just the resistor. R prime is going to be equal to KR times R. And so it's going to be equal to 159,155 times 1 ohm, or 159.155 kilo ohms. And that's it. I guess my last step is just to verify or check my results. And so if I redraw my circuit but instead of the normalized circuit now i have my circuit with all the final values where r prime is equal to 159 kilo ohms and c prime is one nanofarad or 0 0.001 microfarads i can calculate my um, fc prime as being one divided by two pi 159k, 0 0.001 micro, which is approximately equal to 1 kilohertz. That is the spec that I was trying to meet. And so this is an illustration of the process. And again, it, it's difficult to see the benefit of it in, in this simple circuit, but we will see that as the complexity of the circuit grows, there are advantages to using this methodology. Thank you.